Uri, when we do the experiments, either with meaning or without meaning, the traditional with it was without meaning, you're investigating with meaning, there are two different parameters of, of meaning. One is, can you reason your way through it? Can you right. think of ways how to do it? The other is, is there value in the decision? Does it, does it have impact? Is it, is it going to affect me? So there's an emotional impact and a cognitive one. So uh, how do you deal with these two different kinds, really three. You have nothing at all, you have a reasoning capability or possibility, and then you have an affect, a, 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 an impact. So you have three different situations. Right, so we could say you have a reason, you have a situation where you can uh, reason your way out of it. There's another situation where you cannot reason your way out of it, but it, it is very significant for you, like we said, with our switching houses over the coin. Or there's a situation where there's no reasoning involved and it doesn't matter. Lift this hand, lift that hand, whatever. So we, we tried all three of these uh, on, on our EEG experiment. And what we found is we found brain areas where the, they care about reasoning. So if the reasoning diverges from both types of, uh, from both other situations, so whether it's meaningful or meaningless, if you cannot reason your way out of it, it diverges from the uh, uh, reasoning type of, of decisions. And this divergence we found in different areas in the brain, it's, it's very significant, it's, it's something you can really see well, and that's a result we just had very recently, which is we're happy with. Right. And, and how about the situation where you have no meaning and meaning, reasoning being irrelevant? Did you, did you see a difference there? No meaning and meaning. So uh, we do see, uh, in the same experiment that we had, we do s sometimes see uh, brain areas that care about meaning versus non-meaning. Mm -hmm. So um, the meaningful, whether it's reasoned or uh, reasoning or non-reasoning, they, they go together and th th separate from the, the non-meaningful. So they are meaningless, I should say. So we do, we do see brain areas that care about that as well, or uh, electrodes that care about that. What are the implications of, of this in terms of the so-called readiness potential and the ability to predict decisions before we become conscious of it, which some would utilize to undermine the traditional concept of free will? So one thing that we see is actually that um, we, when, we, when you try to predict decisions that have, reasoned, that, are, that have reasoning going on, so first of all, reasoning areas in the brain uh, are involved. This is something that we see on the patients where you can really look at areas in the brain. And um, it does mean that these more meaningful and uh, reasoning-based decisions are also uh, uh, predictable, but as I said, consciousness is then uh, seems to be involved more than in these un, un, non-reasoned ones. So the, these kinds of arguments that say you've made up your mind, and and the, unconsciously, and then only much later does consciousness get involved. We do not so far see that in these more uh, meaningful uh, reasoning-based. Uh, decision. So that, that actually squares better with our intuitive uh, 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 feeling that you know, when you're deciding on a, a life partner or, or which school to go to, you feel that you're deliberating about it and then at some point you make up your mind and then you act upon it, which so far is more in line with what we're seeing in these more meaningful uh, decisions. So right. that's interesting. And what's your hope uh, at the end of the project? Well, we're trying to do things in real time, like the kind of things that you guys saw. So we're trying now to, uh, to do all these things that I told you about that we did offline, to do it in real time in front of, in, let's say, in front of a camera that you can really see. Uh, you can try and predict when the person is, is deciding uh, and what they're deciding about as they're deciding it. That's our, our hope. What about uh, frustrations, uh, difficulties? Uh, where are you? Well, we would have wanted the real-time system that I just uh, the, the, that we discussed to have been working by now. Things are not moving as fast as we wanted. Uh, equipment takes time to to, to come. Uh, graduate students don't work as fast as they do. Neither do I, as fast as I would hope. But overall, the main objectives that we set for ourselves, we are we are getting there, and I'm actually I'm, I'm relatively happy with how this is. Any surprises? Yeah, I didn't think that uh, this thing about consciousness, I, initially I thought that, yeah, we'd look at uh, meaning, meaningful and meaningless decisions and we'd probably see the same thing, the same thing that Libet saw, the same thing that everybody saw. So you, we're going to see the decision unconsciously and then uh, a few seconds later or something, consciousness is going to kick in. That's not what we found. So that was a surprise for me and interesting, I think.